Hi, I'm Thane Plummer, and Dr. Bryce Cole from the Engineering Department of Walla Walla University asked me to speak briefly about my thoughts and experiences at Walla Walla. When I attended in 1980s, uh, it was Walla Walla College, not Walla Walla University, now it's Walla Walla University. I got my uh, undergraduate degree in bioengineering at the time. I will talk to you a little bit about why engineering, why that's a good choice of study, good field of study, uh, why Walla Walla University, and then I'm going to give you two tips, and if you follow these two tips, you will graduate in the top 1% of your engineering class. Uh, top 1% of graduates. That comes a little later on with a few stories about Walla Walla. First, let's talk about why engineering, why study engineering? Engineers make the world a better place. If you need it fixed, designed, repaired, invented, you go to an engineer. Engineers know how to create things. They know how to solve problems. That is one of the fundamental things you learn as an engineer is how to solve problems. Problem solving is an incredibly rare skill, and you will be taught that. Engineers create new technology where things never existed before and some solution needs to be done, an engineer will create that. So solving problems, building new things, and, and being a creator is all part of engineering and it's very exciting and very fulfilling and rewarding. Why Walla Walla University? Walla Walla University is a top-notch educational institution for engineering. They have some, and it did when I was, was there, some just tremendous engineers and educators. The professors actually care about you. They're not just getting a paycheck. They care about your physical well-being, your mental well-being, and your spiritual well-being. And that's something you'll find at Walla Walla University. The professors don't just give lectures and great exams. They go out in the real world. They solve problems there. They work with cutting edge technology when they do that. And then they bring that back to the university. They do today and they did when I was a student. The technology was very different, but the same principle applied. We would work with tools. We would work with uh, components and, and, and parts that were cutting edge. And that was because the engineering professors actually used that in the field and then brought that back in the classroom to help us learn. So now I'm going to give you two tips along with two stories. Um, as I said, that will help you to be in the top 1% of graduates. One of the tips is very, very easy. Uh, the other one is hard. So, um, <clears throat> the story. When I was at Walla Walla University, uh, one of my professors told about an experience when he was working at Jet Propulsion Laboratories. And he was a new graduate, he'd gotten his master's degree, and he was given a problem by his boss. And so he worked it out, solved the problem, brought the answer to his boss and said, is this right? The boss said, how should I know? Okay, so tip number one. Every engineering book, most every, has the answers to every other question in the back of the book. Tear out the answers. In the real world, nobody knows the right answer. When you're faced with an engineering problem, nobody knows the solution. Otherwise, it would already have been done. Nobody's going to tell you, let me see. Oh, yep, that's right. Go ahead and do that. No. In the real world, nobody knows whether or not your solution is the correct one or the incorrect one. So, tip number one, very easy. Just quickly, to, you go just tear out the answers. And then, you will have to figure out the solutions without anyone telling you, yeah, that's right, that's wrong. And that changes your perspective, OK? 
Okay, so that's tip number one. It's easy to do. Uh, makes life difficult, but that's part of your education. It helps. I'm going to tell you another story about uh, Dr. Bryce Cole's dad. Dr. John Cole was my professor of engineering mechanics when I was there. I actually dropped out of that class. It was very challenging, very hard. I got the first test and I bombed it. It was terrible. Got an awful grade. And I reviewed it and I just didn't get the whole problem solving process. I was in the bookstore and I found another engineering book on engineering mechanics and I recognized some of the problems from the first exam and I thought, oh, I can get this book, look at the problems and I'll probably find some of the problems in the second exam. So I did. I bought the book. Before the second exam, I went through, I didn't solve the problems, I just memorized the answers. Big mistake. On the second exam, didn't have enough time to finish, I saw one of the questions from the book I had purchased, and I knew the answer, so I just wrote down the answer, boom, turned in my exam. Boy, was I in for a surprise. One of my classmates had done this, um, 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 X, Y, Z. 25 points was possible, he got three points for drawing an XYZ axis. I wrote down 2.37 meters per second. I don't know what the answer was. Uh, I got a zero. Big fat zero. And on it, Dr. Cole, Dr. John Cole wrote, where did you get this answer? I was too embarrassed to tell him. Well, I looked it up in a book and I memorized it and I just wrote it down. Because in engineering, answers are meaningless if they are not backed up by the problem solving process. In other words, you need to validate your solution. You need to show others how you arrived to your conclusion. This process is used to convince other people. And it's one of the things that differentiates a good engineer from one that's not so good. All right, so uh, tear out the answers. Engineers learn how to solve problems. Their objective is not to write down the correct answer, it's to go through their problem solving process. Okay, tip number two. Story number two. When I was attending, attending Walla Walla, there was a wonderful math professor by the name of Dr. Tommy Thompson. Dr. Thompson, I was in his uh, calculus pre-calc class, and he had a phrase that always stuck with me. He would do something like this, um, write a function 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, and in his booming voice he would say, Mr. Plummer, what is the derivative of that function? He always used surnames for everyone. It was Mr. Plummer, Mr. Smith, Mr. Jones. So, hmm, I... Is it 4x plus 3? Question mark. Uh, sort of hoping that that's the right answer. Dr. Thompson would respond. Mr. Plummer, would you stake your life on it? Maybe? Is there anyone else in this room who would stake their life on Mr. Plummer's answer? hand here, hand there. That was one of his go-to phrases. Would you stake your life on that answer? Okay. Not everything in the world is as definitive as mathematics. Um, but I will say this, and this is tip number two. Be certain of your Solution. Okay? Be certain of your solution. There's nothing you can do to check in the back of the book, make sure it's right. But you can test, you can validate, you can come up with other ways of testing and making sure that you have complete confidence in the solutions that you provide. So those are my two tips. Uh, the easy one, the hard one. And if you do these things, 
you'll graduate in the top 1%. It's a very rare ability to have somebody who graduates who knows how to solve problems and who is confident in their answers. I hope you choose engineering as your field of study. It's very rewarding, very challenging, but you will enjoy it. And I hope you choose Walla Walla. You couldn't pick a better place to go. You'll be glad you did.